Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Fort Myers Seventh-day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath, everyone. God bless you all. Well, this morning we have a few announcements that uh, we want to bring to your attention. Kathy, let's do yours first. Good morning, everyone. I know you have seen a table set up in the back for the uh, last few weeks. We are very proud and blessed to have a Seventh-day Adventist professor from Avondale University speaking this week at the First Christian Church downtown. Now, let me give you a little history. This uh, professor is a part of our health ministry and our health message. He was not brought to Fort Myers by me, by CHIP, or by the Florida Conference. He was brought to Fort Myers by Lee Health, the largest employer in this county, to have him preach our health message for them. That's huge. And I implore each of you, there are tickets on the back table, the tickets are free, I was able to get access to a lot of them. We need to be there in force to mingle with the people that are hearing our health message and it had nothing to do with us bringing it about. God is working. These are the last days. The medical missionary work will be one of the last works that we can engage in. So I just encourage you, make it a point, Monday night, six o'clock, be at this lecture, hear what this young man has to say, and then spread the good news. Thank you. God is on the move. Chris? Good morning. Okay, so I just want to say it's really fun to hear that doctor talking, so please come, okay? Bring your family here and the grandkids, anybody. So, on the, I'm oh, sorry. On another note, VBS, it's time for that again. We're gonna have our VBS, you probably saw the slides already, it's from July 16th through the 20th, from 6 to 8.30, and the ages are 4 to 12. And there are two ways that you can get information or register or anything. You can ask, uh, contact me or Isenia, or you can go, I'll say here, but hopefully you looked and it's, it's in your bulletin too. You go to a website that is vbspro.events and there is a, something else there. So look in your, in your uh, bulletin, the information is there. You can go online, it's free, but it's good to, to register your grandchildren, your children ahead of time so we know how many kids we are looking for at, at least about how many we have, and we can prepare for that, to serve our kids in the community and in the church the best way. So bring your neighbor, your kids, your grandchildren, and pretty soon I'll be talking about bring yourselves on a Sunday so you can set up. So <laughs> we will need volunteers, of course. Yesterday we had a great, awesome turnout as far as volunteers helping set it all up working during the week we had this church is awesome to jump in and do the things to minister to children to whatever it is so thank you but i ask you again to come um i'll give you dates we don't have to worry about that right now but i'll be contacting you but get that in the back of your mind put in your schedules bring your kids vbs and we're going to be talking the theme is shipwrecked meaning when there's a shipwreck there's a lot of things that you need to be ra to rescue the people and that's how Jesus does in our lives. If we have any situation that shipwrecks our lives, Jesus is always there to rescue us. So um, thank you, and I hope to see you all there. Amen. I'm going to ask if everyone will stand with me for a reading of God's Word. And our scripture reading this morning will come from Psalm 51. I'll start at verse 1. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness and according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. 
Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done evil in your sight so that you might be justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was born in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and the hidden part, you shall make me no wisdom. Purge my sin and I will be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and make me willing to obey you. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here at this appointed time to meet with you. Father, we come with uh, thankful hearts, each one of us broken and shipwrecked. We ask, Father, for your uh, presence to fill us today. May your spirit, Father, cleanse us of all of our um, sins and uh, guide us in all of that we are going to hear today from you. Prepare our hearts, Father, to receive. We are so thankful for you and for your promised blessings and your salvation. To you and to you alone do we look for every good and perfect gift in our lives. And we're just so thankful and we ask you, Father, to receive our worship in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before you sit, please turn and greet one of those saints next to you. Tell them Jesus loves them. sit down. Those of you who can, sing this hymn with us, please. Yeah. 
please be seated. Good morning. Uh, our offering day is for 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 like our budget and my ring here says since money given is a part of being a faithful steward when we tithe we are recognizing that God owns everything. Offering expresses our gratitude for what Christ has done for us. He loves a cheerful giver and he has chosen this method to support those who preach the gospel as they reach the world with his message. Ellen White commenting on Beatitude Ross, he who gives his life to God in ministry to his children is linked with him who has all the resources of the, the universe of his command, at his command. The Lord will not fail him in the hour of suffering and need. The, the story of Henry Jengstling, a German ophthalmologist, just it inspires believers to trust in God completely. He wanted to serve others and prayed that God would lead him into a service profession. He was convicted to start a medical school. However, he started, he needed 1,000 of which he had only $46. A neighbor heard Stellan's plans and offered and offered to give him a ride to Strasbourg, where the medical school was and situated. The, that divine providence was was repeat, repeated time and time again. For instance, Stellan went for a merchant when in Frankfurt when money was almost gone. This merchant gave him $33. Once, Strasbourg, with his rent and tuition due, still found himself again. He, his landlord, instead of asking him for the rent, gave him $40. His entire career was a series of minor miracles. Sterling, thank God for by being a benefactor. He performed eye surgeries and started restoring the sight of, of many, even those who could not afford surgeries. Sterling is an example of stewardship. Paul suggested that believers should imitate God's life and generosity. God loved and gave himself as a ransom to many. Many, we, we also choose to give of what God has given us. May, generos may generosity be the real trademark for every believer. May the deacons and deaconess please come forward. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray as, as we take this offering that you, it may be used in your will and it, it may be used people to bring people closer to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Children, it's time for the children's story. Please come quickly, collect an offering for the lamb on the way. Today I'm going to tell you guys a quick story of a girl named Maria, okay? So, one day Maria was so... <laughs> one day Maria was so excited because her mom wanted her to run an errand for her, okay? And Maria loved to run errands for her mom, especially because this time her mom was making her a cake. Who likes cake here? Does anyone like cake? I love cake. I love chocolate cake. Chocolate cake is my favorite. So then, what? Yeah, vanilla cake's your favorite? Yeah, that's good too. So Maria was walking down to the grocery store and she was so excited, but then she remembered, oh no, there's a big dog. There's a big dog in one of the houses. It's bigger than me. And she was so scared to go near the dog. And then she remembered, oh wait, Mr. Smith lives right there. Let me go talk to Mr. Smith. I'm sure he'll be able to help me out. So she went to Mr. Smith's house, and he said, you know what you should do? You should pray while you walk to the grocery store because then you won't be scared. Ask God to help you. So she, that's what she did. She walked, and she was praying the entire time. Jesus, please don't let me be scared, please. And also keep me safe because I'm so scared of that big dog. So when she got closer, she saw that the dog wasn't there. And she said, where did the dog go? And then all of a sudden, the dog came running and started barking at her. And without caution, she ran across the street without even looking both ways. So what happened was, Mr. Jones, who was in the truck, just happened to be driving down the street at the same time she decided to run across. So what did she do? Mr. Jones had happened to hit her, not very hard because he was going so slow, but he happened just to hit her. And when Mr. Jones saw that he hit Maria, he got so scared, he ran out of the car and he was like, Maria, are you okay? I didn't see you, you shouldn't run across the street like that. But Maria got up and she told Mr. Jones that she had been praying the entire time she was running. And she asked Jesus to keep her safe and to not let her be scared. So when she got up, Mr. Jones saw that she only had a few little scratches and she wasn't hurt at all. It was just a few scratches. So the moral of the story is, guys, when you guys are scared, or whenever you need Jesus' help, all you have to do is pray for him to help you guys out and for you guys not to be scared and everything's going to be okay. Amen? So I'm going to do a quick little prayer so we can end, all right? You guys want to pray? You want to pray? Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Bless my mom, bless my dad, protect me. I pray you Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen.
When you think of names of people, sometimes it connotates certain images in your mind, correct? Whether it's a sports name, famous sports name, a famous military person, a famous political person, it has a certain image in your mind when you hear that name. The, the song we're going to be singing is self-explanatory, talking about the name of Jesus. sing this song, it's appropriate. Come to the altar. Those of you who feel a need, please come while we're singing this.
justly and love mercy and walk humbly with a God. Those that are able, please kneel as we pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we have so very, very much to be grateful for. Our dear sister Ashley is on the mend. I spoke with her this week. She was cheerful and happy and indulging in some food I gave her, which was good news. It was just a phone conversation, but it was so encouraging to me. And I want her recovery to be encouraging to every one of us who is praying for something special and something serious. And we are waiting for God to answer. Lord, we know you're working. I ask you to work. I just had a request. That we pray for a young man named Andy, who's the son of someone here, who is homeless right now. Lord, we have homes. We have air conditioning. We have food. We have everything we need. Give us a grateful heart that is just thankful and not, not desiring that which is really not a need, but maybe just a want. Father, we pray for Vacation Bible School that's coming up, that we will all join together as a family and give Chris the support and help she needs, because these children that are here are the future of our church, 
And we need to be there for them, as inconvenient as it may possibly be, even when we're old and we think, well, I've already done my part. No, Lord, we need to continue to do our part. So I just pray that we will all join together in that and every other ministry of this church. Father, Pastor is going to talk about Revelation 10 and us being a remnant. I pray that as he speaks, our hearts will be touched, we will understand what that means, and we will be dead to self and alive to you and be the disciples you have called us to be. And I pray this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to the altar.